Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hi. And I'm Sam Healy. Welcome back, folks. All righty. Well, we are. Yeah, I guess we should just say welcome back, Sam. It's been a yeah. while since he's been here. Sam, what are you doing these days? I am running. Well, I just got out of running a bunch of um, games of Super Fantasy Brawl and Hell of the Last Saga at Virtual Gaming Con 2020. That was a cool thing. And now we're getting ready for Gen Con online. And I'm with Mythic Games. So it's uh, a, a different aspect from what I'm used to with you guys, but uh, glad to be back. Yeah, I just saw a uh, comment on one of the reviews you did for Mythic Battle Pantheon two years ago. Yeah. And it said, <laughs> what did it say? Like, uh, did Sam know he's going to be working for Mythic when he made this review? Like, uh, uh -huh. two years ago? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's a very long-range planner. <laughs> I've got a little crystal ball in my room, yeah. <laughs> All righty, folks, this is it. This is the end of the Summer Spectacular, the last video we're doing. So we have one final contest for you all. Email us at contest at dicetower.com, and you can win one of five games. We got two copies of Hughes and Cues and two copies of Telestrations Upside Drawn, both from the op, and then one copy of Hell, the Last Saga, from Mythic Games. What? Wow. That's awesome. I don't know what those other games are, but that last one, that's the one y'all want. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you want to uh, get these, all you got to do is, again, emails at contest at dicetower.com. And in the uh, subject line, put the word myth. That's Sam the myth. We're not going to say the man, the legend, just the myth. Just, um, yeah, just a and myth. And right. <laughs> in the body, put your name and address, and then check our website tomorrow to see if you have won. All right, I have a question that we need answered, and that right. is this. Is it pick up and deliver or pick up and delivery? Because we debated this at the studio. I know what I call it. What do you guys call it? I say deliver. So do I. So I mean, do that, I. that's the mechanism. It's pick up and deliver. Well, who, who says pick up and delivery? Well, because pick up could be a verb or a noun. So here's the pick up. Here's the delivery. But if you're looking at them as verbs, it's I will pick up and I will deliver. Well, yeah, that's what it is. They're, they're, they're two actions. And it's the combination of those actions that make up this mechanism. You know are what? You guys, I'm going to put... A, are you guys being semantical again? No, 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 no. Um, I'm going to put it, I put agree it in with, the chat. I agree with both of you. Pick up and deliver. Otherwise, it would be like roll and writing. <laughs> Yes, right. No, be, no, because I said pickup could be a noun. I, I um, said I don't know what noun means. Stop flaunting your big brain. What Okay, how is pickup a, a, a noun then? Because it's the pickup. He did the pickup. I think it has to be hyphenative to do that technically. <laughs> Got it. Is, well, I put, is it I put a poll up anyway? I put a poll up in the uh, in, in our chat, and it's currently thirty-four oh. to one. <laughs> <laughs> for what? Oh, deliver, for deliver. Yeah. For okay, deliver. good, good, good. good. <laughs> uh, <huh>. All right. <laughs> okay. This is not necessarily one of my favorite genres. I don't dislike the genre, but I had to dig down slightly deep to get to some games um that i really liked really huh there's not that many it seems like there's really not that many games that that put the pick up and deliver aspect of the game up front and center a lot of games have hints of picking something up and delivering it somewhere else you know yeah. but uh, so but the way i kind of ranked my list was uh, kind of uh, how much of the game feels like it's the pick up and deliver part of the game. Hmm. So that's kind of how I rank them. The more pick up and deliver it is, the higher up it tends to be. I, I, I just kind of ranked them in, in how, in order of how much I liked them. 
And I went on the base because the, the, there's there's one game that like there's one game that I haven't actually played. I've only played a version of it. Um, I haven't actually played the initial version of the game that came in a box. I've played somebody's like spoofed version of it. And so, um, mm. and so that's a little bit lower on my list, but because of that fact, but all the rest of them are, they're just games that I enjoy that incorporate pick up and deliver. Um, and most of them incorporate it to a large extent. It's not just this, like, there's one little thing that you do. It's usually one of the main mechanisms. All righty. Are we ready to criticize each other's views? This time we're going to be nice because Sam's not here. Yeah, let, us be, let, us, let us be polite one time to one One another. time. Okay, one time. Just, just one out of the ten? So yes. 10% kindness. Got it. Correct. Number 10. All right. My number 10. My Amazing number 10 pick. is Oh, sorry. The, Too early. <laughs> my number 10 is the one I was just talking about, as a matter of fact. Uh, and it is Himalaya. Himalaya is um, a game. I, 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 I've never played the actual box version of it. I've only played a version of it called Tatooine. And I think I gave Mike a, a, a picture of, of this guy's setup. Les, Les Chung is a friend of mine that I met at the, I need to turn this off, sorry, that I met at the Gathering of Friends. And he told me that he has, he knows that I'm not a big Euro game fan. And so, I mean, I'll play them, don't get me wrong. But he said, I have this version of this Euro game that I think you'll really enjoy. And so he said, will you play it with me? And, and he gave me this spiel, and, and I was like, sure. Uh, and I was expecting this, you know, basic mock-up of, of Himalaya. And, and it wasn't. It was like he had <laughs> a huge board of, of a landscape of Tatooine, and each player takes on the role of a different faction <laughs> of Jawas. <laughs> on Tatooine, and we are picking up and delivering these different things, droids and, and materials and all that kind of stuff, to uh, different spots, and it was really fun. It's one of those times, definitely, that kind of solidified it. In my mind, that theme completely matters, because if I had been playing this game, you know, up in the mountains somewhere, it just would not have made um, as much sense, I guess you could say. But the fact that you're all Jawa scavengers, um, on Tatooine, taking these wares and delivering to different, it made it really, really fun. And the fact that he um, uh, put so much time and effort into making it a good uh, home cooked production was just really cool. And uh, I played it with him and his wife, and we had a great time. And uh, I hope I can play it again sometime. And I don't care if I play Himalaya ever, but I want to play Tatooine again. So that's my number 10. So your number Himalaya, 10 right? is a. It's a one-person-owned game. <laughs> I, I, I actually, I actually almost put this on my list. The re-implementation of it is Lords of Zidit. Yes. And is it? it? I mean, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, it. Yes, it. Zidit. It. Yeah, I knew it. Uh, all right, my number ten convention experience uh, is. <laughs> oh, that's not. That's not what we're doing. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> My number 10 uh, pick up and deliver game is from Renegade Game Studios, and it is called Terror Below, aka Tremors, the board game. Uh, you are going to be driving around your in your pickup or your truck or what have you, and you're going to be collecting these eggs from uh, underground massive worms and delivering them to the authorities. You are going to also be fighting those worms when they pop out of the ground sometimes. You're going to be playing cards to move uh, yourself around, to mess with other people, to throw stuff their way. There's a little bit of, I guess you could call it take that with the other players, but one of the central mechanisms is picking up the eggs and delivering them where they want that color egg so you can get some victory points. It's, from it's really neat. Good. It's kind of a... A quirky game, aspects of it feel old school, but overall it's kind of a charming design. It's a charming production. This so my number 10, Terror Below. Hmm? The one from Renegade? Yeah. 
Yeah. And the yeah, board kind of looks like the board kind of looks like a big egg or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. It has that tremors feel to it, like right. the movie Tremors. Right, yeah, right. that's a cool one. I like that. Uh, I like the fact that you also included the fact that you're using a pickup in a pickup and delivery game. That's right. That's right. Huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm full of layers, baby. I this is another one I, I considered, but I might be, I might be. Uh, predisposed i think because i just watched tremors recently with the family they'd never yeah. seen it before and i really like that movie uh <laughs> but eh it, it just missed it it's good it's good but mine also is from renegade actually my number 10 okay and this is a game i don't think you've played z but i know i played it with sam and that's junk orbit oh wow. yeah junk orbit yeah junk orbit is you put these planets together with different tiles around them and you just you're like playing cards and pushing yourself in an opposite direction mm -hmm. and going in rotation around these planets. And then you just got to pick up something from the one planet and go deliver it to the other one. I mean, that's the whole game is literally just picking stuff up and delivering it to the other side. And I really liked it. I, it's comes in this round container and it's not really, I don't know that I like round it's containers. Electrical. It looks really light and fluffy and it is light ish. But I thought it, there was more there than meets the eye. This game has not got a lot of buzz, but I thought it was a lot of fun. It's Junk got Transformers orbit. in it, too? Go, Transformers. Go, Power Rangers. More, more than meets than the eye. meets the eye. <laughs> no, I said knowing is half the more than meets the eye. Knowing is half the more Thundercats. than... Thundercats. So, I have the power. GI Formers. Okay, got it. GI Formers. GI Former Cats. Number nine. Back. Back in the saddle again. All right. I'm I'm doing something. I'm sorry. Are I'll, you I'll up start your list as we go. Because it is oh my goodness. It is you, Sam. Are you restarting your computer? No, I know it's me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm Tom. sorry. It's all my fault. By the power of Megatron, <laughs> I have the power. <laughs> all right, my number nine. No, it's my. It's definitely me. It's uh, my number nine is uh, a game that used to be really, really high on my list for a pickup and delivery game, but it was replaced by another one that came out more recently that is very, very high on my list. And this one is called Firefly the Game. Um, mm, Firefly, no. Firefly the Game is... I, I'm a huge Firefly fan. Not huge. I've seen the series multiple times. I've seen the movie multiple, multiple times. That's so I there guess, is, Sam. So technically, yes, you are. That's literally all there is. At two brute, really? Sorry, bro. Sorry, um, that's it. If it was that good, they would have made more. I dagger from my heart, you cretin. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I, I really enjoy the, I, I really enjoy all of the characters in it. It's, it's just a great movie series. It's a great movie. It's a great series. Um, and so when they came out with a, with a board game for it, I was immediately hooked. I wasn't too, um, I wasn't too savvy actually on the pick up and deliver part of it at first, but it fits that universe. It fits that show. It fits that. That's what they're trying to do. They're just trying to, you know, uh, survive in the verse, you know, that's just what they're trying to do. So it made sense. And so that part kind of grew, grew on me. The part that really grabbed me to begin with was, was, was the IP. Um, but the pickup and deliver part is what grew on me. The reason it's, it's lower on my list now is because it takes so long and so it doesn't hit the table very often. So uh, time... I'm still playing the first game. Right. Yes. That's not hyperbolic at all. Um, but that's what's really keeping it off the table for me. It's, it's just the fact that it takes a long time to play. And, and uh, for a three-hour game, because that's usually what it takes, um, I'd, I'd rather play something else that's a little bit more uh, interactive, I guess you could say, and not just a pick-up-and-deliver game. So that's the only reason it's lower on my list. I, feel, I still think it's a great game. I still think it's very fun. 
but it's it's been replaced by another game. So we'll talk about mm. that. Later. Mm. Allow, me to, <laughs> allow me to blow your mind for a moment. You said that the fact that it's so long is what's keeping it off your table. I dare yeah. say the fact that it's so long is what should keep it on your table for a long time. <laughs> oh. You know, that's what that that's actually what happens with Heroescape. That you build it and then you can't, you just leave it I up just there. Can't, yeah, just leave it up. So like it stays I, on the table. I'm not putting this back in the box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My number nine is a cooperative game called Dead Man Tell No Tales. No this, Tales man. whatsoever. None. This, in this one, the pick up and deliver part is, is a small part of it. And it is when you get in there, you're exploring the ship that's burning around you. You got the crazy possessed skeleton dudes fighting you. You are the objective of the game is to find treasure and and carry it out of the ship onto your dinghy and get out of there before the whole thing goes up in flames and consumes you. So the <laughs> the pick up and deliver part is is a smaller part of the entire thing, but I yeah. really enjoy that part because they they put a lot of mechanisms into it. You you are weighed down, so your movement mechanism changes while you are right. carrying something. You become yeah. more exhausted. You are once you get outside finally and drop the thing off, then you can recharge and your the tracker goes up that, that denotes how much energy you've got, how much you can, you know, go on. So it's it's interesting. It's a neat part of a cooperative, you know, pack and slash type game that I wouldn't think would have a pick up and deliver aspect in it. Did so, you just say pack and slash? A hack and slash, I said. Oh, it sounded like you said pack and slash. And I thought that was a very clever uh, thing that you said because you're packing or picking up and delivering, but you also have some slash in there. Yeah, it's a pack and slash. That's what I okay. said then. <laughs> but if since you clever, didn't say it, you're not <laughs> clever at all. Uh, there are atolls in this game. You are trying to avoid them because you're pirates. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Uh, my number nine. Uh, my number nine. I'm done. Go. <laughs> my number nine is my most esoteric game on the list here. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Wait, wait a minute. Let me go get my dictionary. Hold on. No, I ain't going to do that. This is my, yeah, <laughs> like people <laughs> own dictionaries these days. Um, <laughs> my number nine is an old game, 2003, from Pegasus Spiel, and that's Return of the Heroes. Oh, this geez. is a game. Wow. I, I, okay. I'm trying to figure out which who, who which pick I'm gonna be using my my 10 percent hate on. I think I found <laughs> it. Did you not like this game? You don't like this game, but you like Legends of Andor. Ah, whatever. Anyhow, the art on this game is the the I like the art of the board, but the character art is pretty bad. The front of the box doesn't look so good. But essentially, this is a fantasy game back when there was almost no fantasy games made in Germany, and this one here yeah. was. Um, going around and completing quests. But to complete a quest, you would go to one spot, get the thing you need it, and then you would take it to the other spot. And there would be fighting sometimes, although the fighting was very Euro, using cubes and stuff. But I like this game. It's uh, it's an entertaining one. I don't know that it's aged well, per se. It's 17 years old at this point. Did you really just say you don't know if it's aged well? You, you, you have to wonder? Or was that just uh, an esoteric way of saying this game is old and busted? <laughs> That's right, I said it. Wait, you know what? I need. I do need to ask you a serious question. Is Duel of Ages on your list? Because if so, I need to save my hate. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Duel of Ages is not a pick-up-and-deliver game. Pretty okay, good. Hate? This game is a bad pick, Tom, and you're a bad person <laughs> for picking it. <clears throat> I don't even know if I've played this game before. I used to own this game, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you owned it. All right. Anyhow, I, no, I, it. I bought it and then I heard myself repeatedly <clears throat> and then I got rid of it. Uh, well, I'm not going to tell people to go out and hunt it down, but it is the kind of game that if you came across and played it, it's pretty fun. It's not that long of a game, 90 minutes. Um, it gives you a bit of a fantasy flavor, but with a pickup and delivery. And it works pretty well, I think. I like it a lot, despite the naysaying of some. No, I think I, to be serious, I do think you're right about it. Uh, coming out around a time when these games were just not popular. And it it was, yes, it's rough now, but that's because I'm also comparing it to 
a ton of games that have found ways to do fantasy board gaming. This was just sure, but not this, a thing. This, this game was is, actually a pick up and deliver game masquerading as a fantasy game. Sure, sure. Yeah. So Return of the Heroes. Hmm. Number eight. All right. I'm actually on board now. Um, and it's good because I'm on board a Broadhorn. That's Sorry. my number Sorry. eight. Broadhorn, okay. Broadhorns, early trade on the Mississippi. Um, that's that's what uh, I'm bringing in with number eight here. And this is a game that I I can't even remember the the name of the company because I don't I don't worry about that kind of stuff when I'm looking at games. Um, Not a real Grande. Real Grande. Real Grande. Yeah. yeah. And they they are no- notoriously bad, I think, for covers, um, and even worse so for the back of the box. Um, but this one was, this is one of the reasons why it kind of went to the top of the list for me, uh, as, as far as when we were, when I was still reviewing stuff with the dice tower is that it came in and I was like, Hey, this is a nice looking box cover, open it up. And there was really nice looking components on the inside as well. Uh, it's, it's a really simple, it's a really simple game where you're simply flowing downstream, uh, down the Mississippi. And, and that's the, the length of the game. When you, when you start at the top and you go down to the bottom, you can, Re, uh, you can restart, I guess you could say, but you're picking up different kinds of, of commodities as you flow down the river and you're dropping them off at different ports as you flow down the river and you get different points, you know, different ports are looking for a different amount of points for different commodities and so forth and so on. So it's, it's, it's a really simple mechanism, but, but really kind of put it on the, on the list for me was the fact that the, the company that made it usually doesn't make a game that looks this good in any way, shape, or form. And I usually also don't tend to like a lot of Rio Grande games, so this one just kind of stuck out for me, and um, I enjoyed it. So um, that's my number eight. It sounds, it sounds like that... F student who finally brought home a C plus paper. That's what you're you're saying. Like bro- wow. broad horns is like the C plus <laughs> paper, and so it makes it on the list, and it's gonna get cake tonight. And I am glad I decided to be nicer today. Woo! <laughs> what is going on over there? I haven't what? played this one, Sam. It looks interesting. I haven't I haven't played this one either, actually. Well, so yeah, I don't know. when it. When it came in, I'm the one that took took uh, took point on on reviewing it, so I, I, you guys didn't play it. But uh, if you haven't, you, you you should give it a try at least once. I think uh, it you know it brings back a if um, if Mississippi Queen were more of a pick up and deliver game than more of a racing game, then then this is pretty much what Broadhorns is. Okay. Where am I at? All right. Um, number 10 for me is a two-player only game called Akrotiri, which is a tile laying game. Um, Tom would even probably describe it as uh, this game is a little bit esoteric. I'm not sure what esoteric means, but I, I would say you so. What are you talking about? I think you use that. No, it, it, that's not esoteric. You use, um, there's a word that is something a word that you use all the time eclectic that's what you use all the time that's so right you that's use eclectic right. tom uses esoteric <laughs> <laughs> okay all right uh well this is a very eclectic esoteric game akrotiri is a two-player tile laying game in which you are going to be both building the board and then moving your ship around collecting goods and bringing them to different spots to drop them off and get victory points completely a pick up and deliver game it's got a cool player board each player has a player board in front of them uh which did an early version of that whole have stuff printed on the board and as you remove the things that are going out onto the board you're revealing new values under them i, I always love that i always thought that was so clever you can combine you know a tracker basically with a logical reason to remove things. So as I put out this temple somewhere, hey, look, my speed now went up to three because I just revealed the three under it. I like that. I've always found that fascinating. Um, this is a pretty good one. I enjoyed it. It is, it is a little weird. It is a little counterintuitive, maybe. Uh, and, and I wouldn't 
it just it's just a little strange. But I've always enjoyed it. I did not keep it. This was not a keeper because it did not hit the table enough for me. Uh, being two players only, being kind of bizarre. But I always thought it was one of the better games from um, from Senfung Lim and uh, his co-designer, whose name's escaping me. Um, Jay, what's his name? Gosh, now I'm blanking on the names of the two fellows. It's at Criteria and Jay Cormier. Is that right? I'm going to sure. go with yes. Yes, Jay sure. Cormier and Sang Fung Lim. Uh, they're all over the map when it comes to designs. They do all sorts of games, but this is a pretty interesting one, thinky one. So yeah. there you are, Criteria. Have neither one of you played this? Nope. How do you spell it? A K R O T I R I. A K O T I R I. A K R O. Acro. Acro. Yes, Acro. Yes, you're right. Echo. I was thinking Echo. I don't have it marked that I played it, but I fell asleep briefly when looking at the description with that box cover. Um, I, like that. I like the look of it. It's got a good look. You like the look of that box cover? Yeah, it's. Yeah. <laughs> it looked like. I'm Carcassonne. sure it's a fine game. I'm sure because they're good designers. I just it never looked, saw it. it I think like you must have grabbed this on one. The pictures. That's all I know. Right. Right. All right. My number eight is in the pickup and delivery genre, but it's not the kind of game you might think of. Although it is a good chunk of what happens in this game. And if I was putting these games in list of my favorite of how much I enjoy the game, this is probably number one, and that's Western Legends. Love Western Legends. A lot of pickup and delivery in the game. You're picking up the cattle and delivering them to the railroad station um, or the other the other rancher. or And you're also picking up gold nuggets all over the board and delivering them to the bank. Now, granted, there's also a lot of other stuff going on, like shooting the person who's delivering the gold nuggets to the bank and, um, you know, running around and just doing all sorts of fun old west or TV old western stuff. I like this game a lot, but I think pick up a delivery is part of it. I had this cross off my list, then back on, then cross off, put back on, and finally I just left it on. Okay. <laughs> it's a part <laughs> of it. It's it's fine. Huh. You don't you don't agree with that one, Sam? No, it's not that I don't it's not that I don't agree with it. I'm I'm uh I'm surprised that it's this low. I thought he I thought he liked this game a lot more. Oh. Well, okay. I I'll, I'll tell you why. I do like it a lot more. That's an interesting explanation, Tom. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I don't know what the problem is. My internet keeps going out here consistently. I'm um, I'm about to restart my computer and come back on. Um, the uh, so my two reasons are one, uh, it is uh, uh, I there's pickup delivery is not the main focus of the game. It's part of the game. And two, I added at the very last second, and eight was the only place I could add it without having to rearrange the whole list. Hmm. Okay. I'm you're, letting not. People, you're letting people be peek behind the curtain a little too much. Watch out. <laughs> the order doesn't matter so much here. Oh. All right. All right. Number seven. All right. My number seven is a crossover already yep already and it comes in a cylindrical box oh a little bit of conundrum there um but uh, it is junk orbit uh, already mentioned by tom oh you did remember that i was wondering if you'd put that on your list yep i being, did he was being coy i was <laughs> um but it is it's one of those games that again it comes in that little quirky cylinder cylinder of a of a container and you're like come on what, what's gonna what's going on here but you pop it open and that's it's even more quirky after that but then you actually get through playing it and you're like wow that was really fun let's do that again it's one of those kinds of games where it doesn't take a whole lot of time but you're definitely doing the picking up and delivering from from one and, and shooting yourself around orbits and stuff like that and i i just really enjoyed i guess the quirkiness of it and the fact that it was actually a fun game, uh, despite its quirkiness. Uh, so uh, I, I really enjoyed it. And for everything that Tom already said about it, I, I my number seven is Junk Orbit. This is one that just I never I never got to play. I wonder yeah. if I'd like it. I don't know. 
I don't know if you would or not. Um, the look of it, the look of it was a little off-putting just to me. Yeah. Like it, it wasn't off-putting. I was just like uninterested, you know. Sure. Yeah, and that's what I meant. Uh, it just it almost look looks like, like a you're kids going game. to enjoy it. Yes, yeah. that's what I mean. It, it looks like okay, this is meant for kids. It's probably going to be good for them, but I'm not going to be interested in this. But at the end of everything, it actually turned out to be really fun. All right. Uh, all right. My number seven is uh, back to a co-op, and this is called Rescue Polar Bears, a game that I think twelve people have played. Uh, and in it, you are going to be moving your ship around the uh, melting ice. So you, you can move obviously around in, in the water, but the ice will be melting around you, creating new pathways that you can move in and out. You'll, you can even you're trying to slow that down, but you can even break ice which accelerates the end game. That would be a bad thing, but it might help you make a new path that you just need to get in there and get something picked up and deliver it. You're both rescuing polar bears to delay the end of the game. If too many of them perish, you just lose. But the main thing you're doing is actually picking up uh, randomly spawning research points and then taking them you know, where they need to go. So mm -hmm. it's, um, it's neat. It's a difficult game. It's got a good amount of randomness in it, sort of, you know, uh, depending on where, based on, like, where everything shows up, where, what you need to do with it all. But it's different. It's distinct. It's not, to me, the way I think of it is, is it does not feel like a pandemic clone. And by that, I mean the that standard cadence of, like, you do a good thing, then you do a bad thing. Then you do a good yeah. thing, then you do a bad thing. You know, or, or nice of the round table kind of, you know, shadows over Camelot type of cadence. Got it. So, um, yeah. Are, like, those, are those boats the cardboard kind of put together thingies? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they are. Um, yeah, the cardboard boats are, are okay. The the polar bears are, are really cool little ceramic polar bears. Yeah. They're, they're cute. Ceramic? Really? Yeah, they that's are actually cool. ceramic, yeah. So ah. that's my seven, rescue polar bears. Super. My number seven is just as uh, heroic as Z's was, and that is Black Fleet, um, in which you are um, taking, you you uh, control ships that are delivering goods. That's pick up goods from one spot, deliver them to another spot. You're also controlling pirates. British, uh, British uh, fleets that destroy the pirates. So you're like playing all the different ends of this. It's a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, the pick up and deliver is part of what you do. Um, and But there's also lots of fun going after the people's boats. And it never feels too much like a take that game because, you know, you sink my boat. You probably got it close enough to the English man of war. And now I'm going to take your boat out with that. And then then you're, you know, it just we keep reversing positions. It's it's light, but it is a lot of fun. And that's Black Fleet. Hmm. This is like a really fluffy Merchants and Marauders kind of game, right? I mean, it is, but I'll play this any day over Merchants and Marauders, mostly because I can play it five times during a game of Merchants and Marauders, right? And once during each player's shopping trip at during Merchants and Marauders. Huh. Number six. All right. My number six is Mississippi Queen. Um, and I mentioned this earlier when talking about Broadhorns, and I meant what I said there uh, as far as Mississippi Queen is more of a racing game, but the other mechanic that you're doing is you're picking up and delivering uh, um, uh, ladies or travelers mm -hmm. uh, from one island to the next. So there, it, it, that's really the two mechanisms. You've got some resource management in there with managing your coal and, and, and whatnot as, as you're uh, traversing down the, 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 the river. But your, your two main mechanisms are picking up and delivering. And, I mean, you have to uh, do that, and you have to also race. So uh, I don't if you don't if you don't agree with me, you don't agree with me. But um, I've actually I think, never I think played this game. This is one of the ones that got away. I know we had. Uh, I know the game was in print a long time ago, and then came back into print not too long ago, a few years ago. 20, 2019. Yes, last year. Oh, really? That's it? Jeez, yep. I could have sworn yep. it had been like twenty seventeen or something. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's in the Dice Tower Library too. So you could you could run down to the uh, uh, storage unit and grab it. Yeah, this is one I would like to play. It's it always looked intriguing the main complaint i've read about 
is that the game is uh, a very slow racing game, which could be true. I don't know, but no, yeah, yeah I can see that. I can see that. It's, it, it what does, I miss? It's one no, of the first everything. Mississippi Queen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's my number six is Mississippi Queen, but it, I can see that where it, it's it's a little bit slower. It, I think it's. It, the original game was on the front end, I guess you could say, of these kinds of uh, taking Euro mechanisms and putting them into a racing style game. Right. Um, so maybe they didn't do it exactly as well as it should have been done, but it's still really fun in my opinion. Yeah, I'd like to try it. Uh, all right, where are we at here? Uh, so that was Mississippi six, Queen? Mississippi Queen, yeah. All right, I, I've been nice so far, but um, I like Mississippi Queen a lot. Here it, it just goes. ain't pick up and deliver. It is. You have to you have to pick up and deliver passengers in order to have a chance to finish the race and win. You must. It's, it's literally a just a forced stop, really. You just have to yeah. stop somewhere. You know what you, you usually have to do when you pick something up? You have to you have to stop and pick it up. Not me. Oh. I can grab it on the go. Oh, I grab it. it. I'm just saying oh. it doesn't feel like a pick up and delivery game. <laughs> Tom just got roasted like a Fourth of July hot dog. <laughs> Lather him in ketchup and send him out to the my family. Hey, I got red, white, and blue key lime pies made for today. Oh, you that's did? disgusting. Why? You realize that, that color is connected to enjoyment of, of tastes, right? No, 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 no. Okay. Hey, I got a cherry key lime pie. A blueberry key lime pie and a sour sap key lime pie. So red, white, and blue. I didn't mix them. Huh. Okay. All right. I'm just, you know, when you when you pull out something that's chocolate and it it's like you know, blue, there's there's a problem there. No, no, know? no. I get that. I get that. I get that. <laughs> I, <laughs> anyhow. You know what, Tom? I got to tell you, I could have gone the rest of the day without knowing that you had delicious pies at your place. <laughs> <laughs> we'll deliver one to you. That, that ain't gonna happen. He did deliver a pie during uh, quarantine. He did. Really? He brought a pie by here one day, and I uh, I gave him a book in <laughs> return. I want to say I forget what it was, but did he? It was did he lovely. It? Did he toss it at you from six feet away? <laughs> he left it outside. Yeah. <laughs> but then I had to call him and like. Check your front door because I didn't get want it, it to melt. Get it quick. Get the pie quick. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, let's see, guys. No longer, um, check, no longer shut the door. Just check the door. Got it. Yeah. Check the door. Check the door. Uh, where are we at? Number six for me is a game that I know Sam likes. In fact, I might, it might show up on his list. I don't know if he would put it on this list because it is kind of a it, it's a kid's game. Uh, and that is Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters. I think it's a great pickup and delivery game. Yeah. It's it's it here. is for kids. I know. I mean, it's largely for kids. But I'll be—I'd be lying if I didn't say I've enjoyed this game as a pandemic junior kind of game. Some of the mechanisms definitely borrow from pandemic. There's no denying that. You know, the little ghosts build up. When they get to three, they quote unquote outbreak into a big nasty ghost that's harder to get rid of. And you are just rolling a die, moving around. It's a—it is a roll and move game, and and. Getting, you know, nuking the ghosts and picking up gems you're taking from this haunted house and taking them outside. So you're yeah. picking them up all over the place and carrying them out. Right. It's neat. It's engaging. It's beautifully produced as well. It's a really nice production. And I've just always had a good time with it. It's a great jumping on point to someone who isn't much of a gamer, especially a younger crowd that isn't much into, into games or maybe only has experienced the typical you know, uh, mass market kind of games, yeah. and you can and, and you can kind of teach and play because it's co-op. It's all open. You don't have to worry too much about you know dumping a bunch of information on the kids at first and then having to you know them having to soak that up. So I like it a lot. I think it's a it's a it's a success. It's a very very good game. So my uh, number six, Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters. Have you played the expansion? Yeah, I think it's great, and it's and it's difficult. Yeah, it is. It, it actually, it, up. it still, it still keeps the the kid level level there, um, but it makes it a little bit more difficult, a little bit more yeah. challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good. good. Good pick. All right, my number six 
is a cooperative game also uh, in which you are picking people up and delivering them to safety. Flashpoint Fire Rescue is definitely pick up and deliver. You go in and pick the people up and take them outside. And you were giving me shade on Mississippi Queen. I was. I don't and think it's. so. This is a definitely a pot kettle moment. Just it saying. It is not. It's Flashpoint a race? It is not. It is oh, picking God. people up and delivering You're them. definitely racing against the fire. You got to get the people out of the house before the fire can uh, yeah, If you go down that route, every game's a race. Sure. I'm okay it's with that. It's a race. It's a race. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I really like this game. I'm winning. And... <laughs> Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. I think it's say. a fine pick. I think you've all made good choices. Wow. Except for that one uh, game Tom <laughs> picked from 1991. It's 2003. Yeah. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Go ahead. Do yours. I, it's been done. Let's, let's move on. I met Sam. Nope. Number five. All right. My number five is another crossover. Tell me it's with me. It is with Zonia. Ghost fighting treasure hunters. Oh, oh wow. in your face, Absolutely. asshole. In your I didn't say the bad red, white, and blue face. I think it's a good choice. <laughs> I saw you mildly shaking your head in discontent. <laughs> I will read any tiny micro expression you put out. Yep. You've got to pick up the treasures and move them out of the house and deliver them to the front door step, which doesn't really make sense, but um, doesn't really have to, I guess. Uh, it's, it's such, first of all, it's such a well produced game. That's one of the things that I really like about it. Um, I've, I've always said it, games that look better are more fun to play. And this is definitely one of those times. If there had been lesser quality components to this game, for me at least, it would not have been as fun as it is for me right now. But because it looks so good, because the components are so well uh, produced, it's just more fun to play. And when my son asked to play this, I, as long as we have the time and we're not about to go do something else, I will say yes. Uh, usually hands down. I, I don't even think about it. I, I'll, I'll say, yes, let's go ahead and get it done. There have been times where I said, no, we can't because, because we're doing this tonight or something to that effect. Uh, but if we don't have anything else to do and he has to play it, boom, we'll, we're, we're going to get it done because I enjoy it that much. It is very fun, and the expansion just makes it better, um, which you know, it, it gives you more things to do but it doesn't raise the complexity level. It just raises the difficulty, which is a really cool thing, in, in my opinion. So I really enjoy it. Uh, you got to try, uh, of course, the base box first. If you'd like that, then try the expansion. But that is Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters. Yeah, baby. That's a good pick, Sam. And <clears throat> anybody a, who picks it is knows that what they're pick? talking about. That's a nice pick. A nice pick. All right, my number five is... Uh, Another game, I guess, a bit like Rescue Polar Bears, not a lot of folks like. This one also happens to be co-op. It's a lot trickier and hard to play or play well than Rescue Polar Bears. I'm talking here about Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds from the elusive Matt Leacock is uh, a game in which you are going to be he making hiding? sure. He's always, he's, hard, he's a hard cat to spot. Uh <laughs> In Thunderbirds, you are making sure oh. that uh, as you have to, you, as you have to do with these crises that, that pop up, you have to make sure that you are in the right part of the world with the right machines, with the right people. It's a, it's sort of, it's a crazy logistical puzzle, in which there's going to be a tons of interaction among the people play because you have to, you have to look ahead and go. Okay, well, I can go by here. I can pick up, uh, you know, Fab One, the car. I think it's called Fab One, and then I can go fly over to this part of the world, and there, that way, we're getting this bonus and this bonus. But then next turn, you need to go take this rocket to the moon, 
and make sure you're up there so you can do this other thing. It's it's crazy. I really like it. Super puzzly, very thinky game. Kind of tough to play solitaire. It has a solo mode, but it's it might be overwhelming a little bit because you gotta you know it's hard to manage everything. But I I really enjoy it. I think it's a great game. Good production values as well. And there's a bunch of expansions that are all good. That are all pretty good. Um, I, I brought no sense of nostalgia to this game when I first played it, and it did not bother me one bit. I, I got into it just fine. So, this Thunderbirds. Has been, this is your bang the dice game these days. You are putting this game on all kinds of lists. Yeah, baby. Any game, I mean, top 10 screen caps in board games. Thunderbirds. Top 10, you know, nonsense words in board games. Thunderbirds. <laughs> FAB. FAB, baby. Uh, I, I think, for me, uh, the lack of nostalgia is what hurt me on this game. Because I, I had absolutely no interest in playing this game at all. Yeah. Uh, because of the IP. Um, and that, that probably is what did it did it more in for me than anything else but it did make us watch those intros in the studio <laughs> together for a long time <laughs> laughing at them yeah yes. man those are hilarious it takes such a long time to get into the ships the <laughs> countdown and the the, the whole the craziness they go to just to get in the in the cockpit of some rocket is like wow they, they, they finally get into the rocket and says, oh it's, it's over uh, everybody yeah. world <laughs> crisis is, is over yeah, <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, my number five is a game from R and R Games. There's a lot of train games that would fit in the pick up and deliver thing. I don't have any other ones on my list actually. This is the only one, and this is Spike. Ah, oh, this is Spike. a good pick, Tom. Yeah, this is a good one. <laughs> didn't think of it. I didn't think of it, but that's a good one, Tom. I, I'm proud of you. Let me say I'm proud of you today. Well, right now for this moment. I can't say anything else. Uh, this is like I'm those big going. giants. Age of Steam games, but really condensed down into a very quick streamlined game. The only negative thing I'll say about this game is the component quality is, eh, you know, it's not great. It's it's okay. It's not bad. It's just okay. But it's it's simple. Connecting routes around the board. You got these trains that just run around these tracks consistently, picking up goods and dropping them. I really like this one. It's a it's an overlooked game for sure, and that's Spike. Yeah, I like the fact that you can kind of program the the train to go. Like everything, you know, you set the train off, and it, it moves without your input for a while. Yeah, every turn you're, you you're, to, like, the train moves automatically. I like just that. Just pick yeah. it up and move it, right? But it happens. It just sort of happens. I like that. That I don't see that in a lot of pick up and deliver games. So that's neat. Yeah, I haven't I haven't played Spike in oh my. I, I I've only played it once. I was taught how to play it. At a at a game store in, in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, when I was up there, um, and for a, a different reason, and I haven't been able to play it first. I, I remember enjoying it though, so uh, yeah. no, no no bad things. It's a good one. Number four. All right. Well, my number four is. Um, I don't I don't think this is going to be mentioned on either of the other guys' lists because I think it's too big of a game. I think Z's played it, but I can't remember for sure. Okay. But uh, it's a game that I learned how to play up in Toronto at the um, Snakes and Lattes. And um, it, uh, I've, I've enjoyed it ever since. And that is Wasteland Express Delivery Service. I thought this uh, was your number one. No! Oh, I'm no, sorry. Number no. two. I know. I know what your number one is. I thought it was your number two. Actually, no, yeah, I haven't. No, I haven't it's... played it, Sam. It's um, yeah. seems a little too big. Yeah, for me. It is. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. It is kind of big, and and that's probably why it's not my number one or two because I really do enjoy it, but it does take a long time to play. Um, uh, but again, that that's not necessarily a bad thing. I enjoy long games, but for again, for pick up and deliver games. I want them to be a little bit more truncated, not not uh, elaborate and sprawling. Right. But this one is that, but it's really fun. And it has a really cool theme wrapped around it. So it doesn't feel like you're playing a, a, a pickup and deliver game because there's a lot of combat in it as well. Um, but it's definitely a core mechanism. 
uh, and that's why I included it on my list. But it has a, a, a lot of really cool things about it. The, the production is off the charts. Amazing. They have game trays in the, in the entire box, and it's... Right. I mean, just very well produced. And again, that's just one of my one of the things that I really hit big on. So it's um, it took a lot longer than I wanted it to when I learned how to play it. But I've played it since, and it, it you know the time got cut back a little bit, of course. With as is true um, with um, you know when you have a teaching game as to, as opposed to playing it sure. uh, after having already known it, but. It's it's still a pretty strong game, and it's it's one of the ones. If I have the right group of people and the right amount of time, then it's it's one that I'll definitely recommend. So that's my number four, Wasteland Express Delivery Service. Cool man. So, uh, Tom, what do you got? It's Is it me. your number four? It? it is me. Yep, it's you. You oh, always in the middle, bro. I'm forgetting. I'm... <laughs> always in the middle. All right, my number four is my old busted pick. Though Tom oh. will disagree with me, he'll say my number three is my old busted pick. We'll be there momentarily. My number four is an old game, old game from Michael Schott called Hansa. Ooh. I, Hansa wow. is a game from, I want to say early 2000s maybe. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but uh, 2004, something like that. I... I used to rate this game like a nine or a ten. I mean, I loved it when it when I originally got it when I played it, and I I this is the game that made me fall in love with Michael Schott's mechanisms and design ideas, like so so streamlined, so clean. His games are very um, uh, efficient. There's very little you know going on in them, yeah. but they still make you think. So this one, you are all moving around. Picking, buying things in, in separate towns around the, the Hanseatic yep. Sea, and you are then sailing <laughs> to different places and delivering wow. them there. But the cool part is you're all on the same ship. So you're sharing a piece on the board. And so if I know you've bought a bunch of barrels of oranges or whatever, which is completely abstract that they are just orange tiles. But if I know you've got a bunch of those, I want to make sure I don't leave the ship at the end of my turn somewhere advantageous for you. So I'll make sure I, I don't do that. I'll make sure I go over here and make you spend your coins to move all the way where you want to be and do what you want to do. So you have to not just take care of what you want to take care of, but be mindful you might be setting someone up. It's neat. It's complete. It's very unattractive. It's old, like I said, but uh, I like it quite a bit. And I think this got a reprint recently or might have there might be like a kickstarter that already funded but it hasn't delivered something like that i'm not sure i'm talking about the old school hansa i i still got a soft spot for it so that's my number uh four i seeing seeing that board brings back so many memories i used to be really enamored with this game and i still like it i think it's yeah. a great pick but i used to play this game a lot i remember playing it digitally as well and i can't remember what platform i used but Java. i remember it Java? Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> wow, I probably, know. dude. <laughs> Java. <laughs> so old. It's well, I went, game. I went and hunted my... Re I, have a re I reviewed this back in 2005. I, I said, it just wasn't interesting to me. When playing games of Hansa, I often found my mind wandering, thinking about the next game to play. Never a good sign. Wow. Did you find your I said, mind many wandering people, as I was speaking? I'm sure you do that with every number. But. Many people will enjoy this dusty, dry game, just probably not for me. So if I was calling it that in you 2005... You have got to be making that up. Dusty, dry game. I love it. Oh my goodness. No, that's what it says. I said, I'm sure there are a lot of players who really enjoy Hansa, as it is a fine game of analytical wow. reasoning. And the mechanics it. seem to be flawless. But when you read people's comments in the game, the words dry, boring, and bland keep reoccurring. There's a reason for that, and the same reason keeps me from enjoying the game. Wow. So you, basically, you're following other people's opinions of the yeah, game. Yeah, he's saying, if other people don't like it, I will say the same thing. That's what he's saying. Well, like not. This was my 2005 Top Vassal. I do not vouch for that 25-year-old. All right. Was what? I 25? To no. 2005? You were born in 1980? Uh, sorry. I was that point. Uh, I was 28. 28. Wow. You're old. You're a little baby. <laughs> In 2005. Anyhow, 
Uh, all right. Well, my number, my number uh, four is a Feld, actually. Since we're talking about, yeah, you probably wouldn't even think it. There's, there's like, no, no one thinks about Feld has a pickup and deliver game. This is one of his. I don't think about Feld. Period. This is, is one of his a lesser version. Now it's the Oracle of Delphi. Oh, okay. I really I'll like this game, it. which is essentially a, um, a race where you're trying to do 12 quests to impress Zeus. And you, many of those, you have to pick stuff up from one spot on the board and zoom it to the other spot. And you do this through various Feldian Euro mechanisms. And I think it works really well. I, it's possibly, no, it's not my favorite Feld. <clears throat> We'll never know his favorite Feld. <laughs> Did what I freeze your, up? Yeah, yeah, you froze up, yeah. Uh, you you said it's not my today, favorite. Brother. You said you went like this. It's not my favorite Feld. <laughs> and you froze up like that with a dumb, no, dumb saying, face. I, with a dirt said, face on. Well, I said it's one of my favorite Felds. Really enjoyable. Um, and it is, it's not super highly regarded but it is ranked 559 on, on board game geek i really like this one it's colorful it's bright and it's definitely pick up and deliver it's definitely one of the ones that did not get a lot of love when it came out yeah it is it, that one that's a fell that fell through the cracks a little bit i never played it neither did i yeah number three All right, my number three is another crossover. Who do you think it's with? Oh, wah, wah, wah. Oh, no. Me. You? Which one? Western Legends. Boom! Roasted, no way. Ain't oh, no way. okay, I thought it was right. I'm Just so kidding, yes, it is Western Legends. I'm sorry. <laughs> <it is. laughs> I don't, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> because, boom! And then roast it. I'm like, wait, hold on. <laughs> That's what Sam did when he was a teacher. He has a question right. to a student. They'd say the right answer. He's like, boom, no. <laughs> but, uh, no, actually, Western Legends was one of the first games that actually came to mind when I when I talked to, when I was thinking about uh, what games are going to make my list. Um, and I didn't have to go searching for it. I already knew it was going to be on my list. I just didn't know exactly where. So. Um, that uh, I, I just really enjoy the theme of the game. There aren't a whole lot of Western, well, good Western themed games that are out there. Um, there's, there's, there seems to be a little bit of a uh, proliferation recently of them, but, and, and Western Legends is one of them, but uh, it's a really small list for me at least. I mean, I've got Bang the Dice game, uh, uh, Fistful of Meeples, this Dice one. Dice Town, you like Dice Town? Dice Town, yeah. But, I mean, you know, we're talking about, like, you know, one hand and maybe a couple extra fingers that, that you've got that are good Western-style games, and this right. is one of them. Um, it just really captures the theme well. I like the duality of it where you can be that, you know, cattle rustler or that, uh, um, uh, you know, the the, the renegade-type person, or you can you can be the, the sheriff and, and try to... Uh, and there's different paths of victory. You're trying to uh, arrest this guy, these other guys, and get him to jail and that type of thing. So I, I like that duality that's there, but I also like the the, the pick up and deliver aspect of it as well. Um, so it's it's really fun. Uh, enjoyed it a lot when we played it live, and and uh, I've played it since, and it's it's still really fun. So um, my number three, Western Legends. I remember I've been waiting for game. This. What was that, Tom? I'm waiting for this because you said that that last one wasn't your old and dusty game. No, this is not old. This is not as old as Hansa, but I know you really, really dislike it. You that can't guess. Mean. You can't guess of a, of a very obvious pick up and deliver game that you raged against. Logistico. No, I never played that one. Um, Bombay. Oh, that game's a piece of garbage. There you go, baby. <laughs> Yeah. Bombay <laughs> is from Istari Games, one of their least popular one of the one of the less popular games, I'll say. And it is completely about pickup and deliver. You are you have a an elephant 
that has uh, like a little plastic elephant with spots above it for two wooden cubes to actually fit on his little miniature. And you are going to travel to different towns, pick up these little cubes, buy them, move your little elephant and deliver them some places. The places everywhere you can go to has a, a market made up of basically three lined up cubes. And if you sell the thing at the top, for the most profit, of course, then you take the cube and put it at the bottom. Then the it's, it's a very small game, and I think that's partly. Well, I know partly what you disliked about it, Tom, is that you found that um, not a lot is going on. It's a very tiny game, and also you could pass and make one coin, and you had a problem with that. I did it, and I still have a problem with that, <clears throat> even though I can barely remember how it worked. But yes. Yeah, yeah, because the, because the scores are fairly low. Your argument was, gosh, somebody could just pass every turn and maybe win, which is not true. But I I I, I understood what you were going for. Oh um, man, I got so much garbage for saying that. You did, my you my, did. my point was that. my point was that I should have to work a lot to get a few more points than if I didn't do anything at all. Right, right. Yeah, it lacked excitement for you, and it is a small design. It is kind of a very truncated design. But I gotta tell you, I, I like it. And it's I did get rid of it, and it might be one of a handful of games that I, that I kind of regret I got rid of. It's hmm. different. It's a different, and there's not that many pick-up and deliver games, I guess. You know, at the end of the day, that's part of it. Um, but yeah, I like it. It's good production. I, I never thought a starry artwork was very good. Well, graphic design, I should say. Graphic design is not very good from them. But this game was uh, neat. It's a neat game. So, Bombay, my number three. Have you ever played this one, Sam? Nope. No, never nope, tried Never, never played it. That's cool elephants. That. I do like the elephants carrying the cubes yeah. around. That's They're cool. They're great. The production's cool, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things that I remember about it is, is the uh, production value of it. But, I've, no, I've never played it. All right. My number three is another game where pickup and delivery is a good chunk of the game but not all of it and you can choose to ignore it completely but i never do so that's why it's on my list i always pick up and deliver in this game one of the greatest space games ever made even if you had a bad first experience and we'll hold that against the game for the rest of your life and that would be <laughs> zaya what this one is. Yeah, yeah. uh zaya this isn't a, zaya. This isn't a, this isn't a pick up and deliver game sun. This is a this is a do I want to fly into the sun or not game? Yeah. yeah. Coin flip the game. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I know. Anywho, uh, it's a pick up and deliver game, and yes, you can go around and be a pirate and fight pirates, but a good chunk of the game is picking cubes up from one planet and finding the planet to deliver them on, illegally or not. There's a lot more to the game than that, but it is a good chunk of it, and it takes, for example, if Eric Summer was with us, he would be shouting Merchants of Venus. Obviously, none of us put that on our list because we have taste. This game replaces Dang. that one. Eric ain't here. What is he going to do to me? Woof. I'm sorry, Eric. I'm really sorry. Sorry, Eric. You're going to get that letter of resignation, and then what you going to do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He'll just send you a recorded message. Dear Mr. Vassal. (laughs) Number two. All right. Well, my number two is going to garner much hate from uh, uh, Senor Vassal. Um, And probably... (laughs) Probably from uh, maybe a little bit from Z as well because I don't think he's played that game. And if he if he has played this game, I don't think he liked it. I can't remember, but it uh, is called Fire and Axe: A Viking Saga. Oh yeah, I used to own Fire and Axe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to hate on this. No, no, one. no. I liked it. I liked Fire and Axe fine. This is not one I regret getting rid of. It wasn't getting played, but I had the pretty Asmodee version. It's gorgeous. Yes, yeah, and I, I have kind of amalgamated... Um, uh, In your face, Tom, amalgamated. Have, yes. That means combined several things into one new thing, an That's amalgamation right. of two editions of the game, you esoteric yes. animal. <laughs> it's creature. <laughs> you oh, keep creep, on using that word. 
I do not think it means what you think it means. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, fired up. First of all, I was like, it, it it popped in my mind right off right off the bat, and I was like, is that really a pick a, pick up and deliver game? Um, and uh, as I began thinking about, it, you're not really picking anything up. You're you're making it in your home port, and then you're delivering it. So. I, and you have to go back to your home port to pick this stuff up. So yeah, it's a pick up and deliver game, and I'm going to stick with teleport that. back though, right? You kind of just can sort of yeah. teleport back, but yeah, at the end of your turn, you can choose to go back to your home port. Um, and if you do, you 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 just you're just back in your home port. But right. then you have to pick up your your stuff and then go deliver it. Um, so yeah. it it works. It's yeah. it's a pick up deliver game in my in my opinion. Um, but um, it, it's, it, it, I love Vikings, of course, you know, well, I love Viking themes, let's put it that way. Um, I don't condone any activities that Vikings have ever done in the past, and <laughs> um, see, what else do I have to say here? But you, <laughs> you get the idea, right? I, I, I really enjoy the game. It, it has um, um, a good uh, cadence to it, I guess you could say. I love having to chart out your days, so to speak, and be yeah. able to Make sure that you have enough days um, taking into account if you're going to cross over into different waters. I like that that level of, of complexity that's there. Uh, I also like how you have to plan out because people can come in and swoop in and take something that you were planning on doing if, if you kind of telegraph what you're going to do too much. So I like that tension as well that I don't necessarily like in a whole lot of games, but th- it works in this one. And so, yeah, it's it's one of the first ones that I thought of, so I knew it was going to be high up on the list. That's my number two, Fire and Axe, a Viking Saga. Cool. Mm. Yeah, that's good stuff. All right, my number two is uh, a game from the same designer as Carcassonne. This is a game came out, again, around the mid-2000s or so, and it's called Mesopotamia. I'm not sure if you guys have played this. Yep. Wow. Really? Ago. Yeah. Mesopotamia is very much about picking up and delivering. It's a logistics game. It's a race game also. And by that, I mean, there's no points. Once you complete the thing you're trying to do, you just game's over. You win. Uh, and what you are doing is exploring the landscape. You are going out and gathering stone, gathering wood, bringing it back, building huts for your clan, taking the uh, I think you take the stones and and deliver them to the temple you help build up the temple you then eventually at the huts can gather food and make a sacrifice at the temple and you make a number of sacrifices you win that's basically it but there's a it's a nice interconnected series of mechanisms a bunch of little different things like okay so when you make a when you make a sacrifice at the temple the character who does it is lost they are they sacrifice themselves i guess and so you need to make sure you have enough group enough enough characters to do things you can also show up at a where somebody else is carrying a stone and if they're by themselves you show up with two people and you can take their stone and just keep it and just take it so it's it's neat it's an interesting game again it's very logistical some people could describe it as a very dry game and i could totally not not argue with that but um i thought it was the most distinct game that that designer has made from Carcassonne because it's 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 got tiles and that's about the only DNA those two games seem to share. So I like it. Uh, Mesopotamia is a, is an interesting design. That's my number two. Cool. So I looked at my written review of this one. Oh, here we go. Oh boy. How dusty I said, is it? That means we're taking too long on our entries. Z. He has time Mesopotamia to works. Well, no, I'm curious because I haven't thought about these games. They're old, years. old games. Dude. I said Mesopotamia works well enough that I wouldn't turn down a game of it, but it's not something I would ask for a desire to play off. And it's interesting and fun, but the replay. Of- I lost you. The replay. There what? You go. The replay ability, I would imagine. The replay ability is low. And basically. That was my complaint. I said the game was fun and all, but as I played multiple games of it, I did kind of the same thing over and over. And I said the lack of replayability and strategic options bring it down slightly for me. I could see the. I think the strategic options are actually there. I could see the lack of replayability. It does have kind of an order in which you you need to do the same thing to win. So I get that. Yeah. My number two is the newest game on my list that came out at Essen last year. Okay. And this is a game in which you you are the one being picked up and delivered. 
and that is fast sloths. In fast mm. sloth, you are fast. a sloth, and there's animals. You're, you're too lazy to move on your own, so you use animals that are all over the board, whether they're elephants or ants or whatever, and they all move in different ways, and you use them to pick up your character and move it. Um, I, I would, I, if only there was like a cool slogan for this, but I, I couldn't think of one. Um, so I'll just say pick up sloths and move sloths. Uh, um, but anyhow, the pick up and deliver thing is really strong in this. And every game is different because there's different animals. You can pick a different mix of animals. Okay. And I really like it. It gives me a strong feel compared to Elfinland back in the day, but it feels much more streamlined. It doesn't look pretty, um, but I would, uh, I, I can get over that. Um, but yeah, I'm still trying to think of a good tagline for this. I cannot think of one and have not had a good one given to me yet. Is, is, bon is Bonacore a replayability? Go ahead. Is, is, is Bonacore a, a paid ad, uh, a sponsor of, of the uh, Summer Spectacular? Yeah, but. You should know he, by now. There's he, no way I'm... he's having he's having like a heyday in the chat right now. Oh really? I didn't notice he was in the chat because I have him automatically blocked. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about it. Oh my goodness. So this game has a lot of replayability out of the box, you're saying, Tom? Yeah, he calls it pick me up and deliver me. But that's a dumb phrase, so I won't use it. <laughs> I didn't mean to open up the can of hate, Stephen. I'm sorry. Oh, the can of hate was already there. I was just trying to be a little bit more oblique about it. But oh, since Sam is going to be more straight up. Um, oh, all right. Jeez. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a great game. Fast slots. And finally, number one. Dude, all right. Forget about it. All right. Um, my number one is when we I first saw yes. this game come out. <laughs> so it was uh, it was amazing. I saw the cover and I was like, "This is a game that I must own. I must have it." Has my favorite um, vehicle from movies on it, and so I just really enjoyed it. Um, it it's from fantasy flight i really enjoyed the game um a lot after my first play second play just confirmed it and then kept playing heard people say a lot about uh the fact that it, it plays a lot longer than it should and i didn't understand that because we already had um not short games but shorter than they were saying and so i don't I don't uh, recall having like a three-hour game of this. Games of, of this game that I've played have, have usually been only about two hours or so. Um, so I just really enjoy the game a lot. And uh, this is the actual very first game that I thought of for for this list. So At this um, point, I think you should just not even say it. <laughs> I, I'm wondering. I think you should get to I the shouldn't. end and be like, and that's my number one. I really do think so. <laughs> This would not be good for people who are new. Yeah, oh. I know, I know. But this is like a classic Sam right here. Classic, <laughs> classic Sam. Uh, I did it because I saw somebody say, hey, you should do this right now. So I was like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I'll do that. So Star Wars Outer Rim is, is my number one. Uh, a lot of people in chat were already talking about it anyway. So it, it, I kind of telegraphed it when I was talking about uh, Firefly. Um, but... Uh, it is. It, it has completely replaced Firefly for me. Um, I, I've referred to Star Wars Outer Rim as uh, the game that Firefly wanted to be. Um, and I, I, I really do think that way. It's not that I dislike Firefly any, any, any more or less. It's just that it does the same thing that Firefly does. It just does it in a better way. And on top of that, it has an IP on it that I enjoy more than Firefly. Not that I dislike Firefly. It's just that's the way it is. So um, I like the fact that um, you can be some of the some of the main characters. You can you can be Boba Fett. You can be Han Solo. Uh, you can be all these people. But on top of that, you can also be uh, you can interact with 
a lot of the other characters that you know from the Star Wars universe as you stop at these different ports uh, along the Outer Rim. And I like that. That's just because usually with these kind of games, you have this spotlight on all of the big characters and all of the lesser known characters are kind of, you know, just they're there, but they're not really there. There's, you're, you're playing with the champions, so to speak. But this one, it really kind of incorporated everything, um, you know, trying to stay away from the Imperial, you know, scout ships and, and that type of stuff. That it, it, It's all there. And uh, the theme is, is really what does this for me. Um, but I like the gameplay as well. It's just very fun. Enjoyed it a lot. So my number one, Star Wars Outer Rim. That's one I gotta I gotta play. I think I'd like this more than most of the other FFG Star Wars games. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right, my number one is a much smaller game. It's actually a trick taking card game that incorporates very strongly pick up and deliver. It's a game called Tricky Tides. You know what I'm talking about, Tom? You look like you do or like you're surprised or something. Uh, He's looking up what he said about it earlier. No, yeah, right. I've never no, played very new, this one. So. I've never very played new. this one. Yeah, Tricky Tides is... Uh, you have a grid of cards out on the table. Each of those cards has cubes on it. And you are you have a little cardboard standee ship. I think it's a cardboard standee ship. But And you're playing tricks. You know, you're just going around leading a card. People follow suit, all that stuff. The winner has a... a what is that called? Wind Rose? Is that what that's called? I, um, I don't know. On it, and you can move your ship based on which ways it's pointing. Pick up cubes. You're going to places where you can deliver those cubes and complete little fulfillment. You know, to do a little... Uh, you know, you take the necessary cubes over there, fulfill the, the, the mission, the requirement, and you pick up that card and score it. It's very clean. It's very straightforward. I like that it combines trick-taking with something that I did not think would work well with it. And indeed, they do work well. Uh, it's not only one of my favorite, I guess, my favorite trick uh, pick-up-and-deliver game, but one of my favorite trick-taking games as well. So I really enjoy it. Very <laughs> portable, too. Small. So it's my number one. Hmm. Huh. I I've um, not played this, so I have nothing to say. Neither have I, but I'm I'm not taken by the box art. I'll tell you that much. But, it's uh, got it's, it's got like uh, on purpose like that old timey look of um, old yeah, map charts and stuff. You know, it's got that look because like sea monsters in it and stuff, and they have yeah. like the beluga whale looks like those line drawings from that from that sure. time period. I get it. All right, my number one is not a game I expected to be number one when I went through the list and put them together. This is actually my least favorite game in a trilogy, and yet it still is my favorite of this particular genre, and that is either Century Eastern Wonder or Century Golem Eastern Tides. Um, I really like Century a lot. I like it better than Century Eastern Wonders, but Century Eastern Wonders in this game, you are moving your ship around and the whole game is about getting your ship to the right spots to change the goods to other things, to change them to other things. And it works really well. Um, And it's going to get overshadowed by its, you know, brethren, Century Golem, I mean, Century, uh, uh, the first one and the last one. And it's like that mid, the middle child in there. But it really is a good pickup and delivery game. If you like that idea, you start with cubes and then you move to this island, change those cubes and move them to something else. And you go over here and eventually you got to get to the outside spots and get those cubes to where you need them to be to turn them in to accomplish and win the game. And I was pretty impressed with that one. So Century Gold Edition Eastern Mountains or Century Eastern Wonders? Hmm. Actually, since they now announced the third one in the Century Gold thing, don't don't even bother getting Easter Wonders because the Golem Edition look that looks that much better. Yeah, that should be coming out this year, maybe the the, the complete now the, to to complete the Golem set. I think that's coming out soon. Yeah, they just announced it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'll be cool. I'll have to complete it because I still only have the first one. I never got the second. I'll probably pick it up when I get the third, just to because I'll need I'll need them all so I can combine them. That's good. That's a bunch of good Gotta picks. Catch them all. all right. Well, let's see what the, well, the chat is all wondering. Chad they, is wondering why we have not said horrified. 
Yes, they are. They're losing their minds that you, you one of you guys did not pick Horrified at all. It's my number eleven. <laughs> Mine too, and I haven't even played it yet. Then it should be your twelve, Sam. Be realistic. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. No, it's just that Horrified doesn't doesn't feel like a pickup and delivery game to me. Really, it's about fighting monsters, I guess. But you have to pick up their corpses and deliver them to the graveyard. No, you don't. <laughs> no, there's a ton of there's a ton of pick up and deliver in it. You're also ushering these people that pop up in town. You got to usher them to where they need to go. Um, yeah, it's Ooh. good. I did not think of it as a. I, I it really probably it honestly would have been like my eleven or twelve. I don't know. These others feel more like they're about the pick up and deliver. I guess. What about Istanbul, Z? I don't well, think I, I consider I, that a pickup and deliver game. I, I, I frankly like Constantinople better, but... Why'd they I change not, it? I would not... Oh, my goodness. I don't Nobody know. Knows. <laughs> I can't say. <laughs> oh. Come on, Sam. Well, the same thing. This for me. The same thing. Don't I, didn't pick no, I don't want to on the nose. Come on. <laughs> I didn't pick Explorers of the North Sea because it's an okay game at best. Raiders is awesome. Explorers is okay. Yeah, I don't I don't like Explorers that 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 well either. Raiders is definitely the best game in that trilogy. Um, although I like Shipwrights as well, but uh, Explorers was my least favorite. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> well, if you're watching this later on, folks, you can always add in your favorites in the comments. We want to thank everyone who took time during a holiday to come up and join with us. Uh, yeah, once yeah. again, happy Independence Day to everyone. Um, this is the happy end now. Treason Day, you are ungrateful colonials. <laughs> We're sorry. <laughs> it's the 243rd anniversary. Um, the. Uh, this is the end of the Summer Spectacular. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you had a great time. We're really glad that Sam was able to come back with us. Me and too. you will see more of him all over the internet as Mythic keeps talking about games. Yeah. And also because that's pretty much the only place you can see people these days is on the internet. Hell, the last saga, people. You got to go check it out. Pledge Manager is open. All right. Shameless plug. No, no, no worries. Because yeah. tomorrow... Someone's going to win a copy of that, so we'll see who right. that is. And don't forget, you can get your own dice person. Sam has one. I have one. Z has one. Do you want your dice person? You can bid for that by emailing us at auction at dicetower.com with your high bid. And the highest bid will win one. We already have four winners. Today will be the last winner. All right. Sweet. Speaking of wieners, I'm going to go grill some now. It's hey, Everybody it's, was talking about wieners. Just, yeah, that's right. That's a bad transition. But... Um, I need to talk to you about uh, some some Keep pie act related yeah. activities. That's right. Uh, you, know they, you know they deliver that stuff all across the nation too. I'm just saying. They do. They do. I don't want to across the nation. <laughs> and then I believe fireworks are happening. Oh yes. boy! All right. Well, you have a good time. Be safe. Pyromaniac. Sam, it's good to see you, buddy. Thanks for hanging hey, out with us, man. Good to see you guys too. Uh, and you know what you have to do, Tom? After you you have those fireworks, the best way to put it out is to dig a hole. Dig a dig a hole. Diggy diggy hole. What? Diggy diggy hole. <laughs> 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 Until next time, folks. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Zigarcia. And I'm Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Take care. <laughs>